I shall talk to you today about uh, hernia. Um, hernia is, uh, in medical terms, is a protrusion of uh, intra-abdominal content into the abdominal wall. Uh, the three common hernias uh, one notices is one is the umbilical hernia that is a, a, a protrusion in the area of the umbilicus. The other one is the inguinal hernia that is uh, the hernias at the lower end side of the abdomen where the thigh meets the abdomen. And the third and the common one is the ventral hernia or otherwise called the incisional hernia which will occur after an operation where the area becomes weak. Now I shall talk to you about the umbilical and the inguinal hernia in this episode. Umbilicus is a, a naturally weak area in the abdomen because that is where the umbilical cord links the mother and the child and when the umbilicus heals in a couple of people it does not heal very well. So the area becomes very thin and we often see children with uh, protruding uh, belly button. Until two years time uh, this umbilical hernia does not require any treatment but after two years if it does not become small that will require some sort of a surgical treatment. Umbilical hernia is also seen in adults and especially in women after childbirth and even in men folk who have very big protuberant abdomen which in, is a very common feature in India. And uh, here usually either uh, the fat from inside the abdomen or uh, the intestines can sort of protrude into the umbilicus. And over a period of time, uh, these umbilical hernias can uh, become big and become symptomatic. Whenever anybody has pain in this hernia, it will require treatment. Or even if it is big or when somebody can notice a, a gurgling sound when the hernia disappears, this has to be looked into. Likewise, inguinal hernia, hernias at the lower end of the abdomen is a very common uh, condition and is seen in both young and the old. And this is also due to a, a weakness in the area of the abdomen which will, is responsible for this hernia. In any patient presenting with the swelling which increases on standing up or straining or while passing motion or lifting weights that needs attention and uh, should see a, a doctor. A surgeon preferably and uh, the surgeon will uh, just check on to find out whether there is any uh, difficulty in passing urine because especially in the elderly when they uh, strain to pass urine uh, the hernias become prominent and uh, in um, others who have constipation we have to constantly strain to pass motion is another condition can lead to hernias and also in people, young people lifting heavy weights like weight lifters um, and, and also people have chronic cough um, because uh, it's like COPD or bronchial asthma when they keep on coughing the pressure inside the abdomen increases and that can cause hernia. And uh, once the, all these are um, checked up and uh, made sure they are not present, then uh, in the elderly patients especially who have a diabetes, blood pressure, asthma, etc., uh, they have to be checked by the anesthetist and the concerned specialist to make sure they are fit for surgery. All hernias have to undergo some form of treatment. A few hernias, especially in the elderly which are asymptomatic can be left alone. But otherwise hernias require surgical treatment. Umbilical hernia for instance which I was talking about earlier, uh, this hernia is small, uh, it's, uh, we need to just make a cut under the umbilicus outside and close it uh, in a very simple manner. But the hernia is somewhat big, the surgeon decides it more than 2-2.5 centimeter size that requires a mesh repair. In other words we need to put a net on the area to suture and this is done uh, mostly by laparoscopy. We do it by laparoscopy as a daycare surgery. We make small holes in the abdomen, go into the abdomen, have a look at the umbilical orifice from inside and clear the intestine or the fat that is inside it, pull it down, take a mesh which is a double sided mesh, the smooth side uh, towards the intestines and the rough side towards the abdominal wall and we stick it to the abdominal wall by small small screws and some stitches. This is called laparoscopic umbilical hernia mesh repair and this will not take more than about 20 to 30 minutes and the patient will be back 
to his or her uh, routine work in about inguinal hernia also has a similar procedure where uh, through three small holes in the abdomen, inguinal hernia also has a similar procedure where through three small holes in the abdomen, the size of little finger, I uh, will go into the abdomen, have a look at the inguinal hernia, the defect from inside and uh, the defect is uh, um, sort of uh, this is thin membrane called the peritoneum covering it, we will just cut it open and uh, peel it down. And there are three, four different hernias that can happen in that area. A wire net called a mesh is inserted again and uh, the, the membrane is stitched back to keep the mesh in position. This, all, this operation also does not take more than an hour and uh, patients will not have any pain after surgery. A few hernias. Um, which are very big and will go into the scrotum will require an open surgical repair and also when a, a hernia is obstructed. In other words, sometimes patients come with the severe abdominal pain because the hernia is not going back into the abdomen where intestine gets blocked which will require an open operation. Why do hernias require surgery? Hernias require surgery because one they can become big and two they can become obstructed which makes it an emergency where we need to operate in the middle of the night. If you do not do that, the intestine which is protruded into it becomes gangrene, otherwise it becomes bloodless and can get damaged You require a major operation. The problem with hernias of course that require a certain expertise to do a laparoscopic, good laparoscopic hernia repair and uh, hernia recurrence after surgery is not uncommon. Certain hernias. Uh, uh, um, especially when we do not take care of the constipation and difficulty in passing urine or chronic cough, the hernias can recur. And uh, many people keep asking that uh, why do you use a wire mesh which is a foreign body, um, why cannot you do without all hernias will require a mesh. Mesh is a foreign body but then again in a very very handful of patients this mesh can cause problems in terms of infection requiring it to be removed, but majority of the patients will not require a mesh to be removed. The foreign body will be accepted with the body and it will get assimilated into the system and does not cause any trouble. Hernia recurrence is a problem and if it recurs well again that will require surgical treatment. So, in effect umbilical hernias and inguinal hernias are not common, uncommon. They usually are caused because of the weak abdominal wall and sometimes increased abdominal pressure due to straining. They had to be treated surgically and a mesh has to be used and preferably laparoscopically and this is again a daycare surgery. Patients get back to their normalcy in about 2 days time. Uh, we generally ask them to avoid lifting weights for about, uh, about a month or so, but then they will be normal. Thank you.